Welcome to my talk discussing the scientific method and tips for a great research project. My name is Laura Harris, and I'm an assistant professor and science laboratory coordinator with Davenport University in Lansing, Michigan. I'm also a member of the Davenport University Day of Research Committee and a frequent judge of projects. So what is the scientific method? Well, the scientific method is a process for the systematic pursuit of knowledge. It is self-correcting, which I'll describe more in a minute, and involves critical thinking. So why is the scientific method important? Well, the scientific method can provide a framework for the objective design of experiments and their interpretations. The scientific method can advance knowledge through peer review and experiments and observations that are repeated by other people. There are some limitations to the scientific method, however. It cannot prove everything. Because the scientific method at heart relies on a hypothesis which is testable and falsifiable based on repeated experiments and observation, it cannot look at things that are not testable, for which data cannot be collected. So there are some questions like whether or not God exists that the scientific method simply cannot address. Further, the scientific method cannot make judgment values. It cannot say that something is right or wrong based on moral standards. This is where the critical thinking part of the scientific method comes in. So the scientific method, what is it in terms of the steps involved? Well, this is an overly simplistic viewpoint. And it gets a lot more complicated than this, but this is the foundation you will need to know for a day of research project. So you will start with either asking a question or doing some observations, what's considered doing background research. It doesn't matter which one comes first. You can ask a question or you can make an observation that leads to a question. And if the question comes first, then you have to see what other people have done to answer that question so you can then establish a hypothesis that is unique. Regardless, once you've asked a question and done some background research, you will then construct a hypothesis, which is an educated guess. If I do something, then something will happen. Once you have a hypothesis, you can then begin to design an experiment to test that hypothesis. And then you will run that experiment, collect data, and then use that data to draw conclusions. Once you have conclusions, you will then report your conclusions along with the data. Here's where the peer review process comes in. So then that way other people can take what you've done before, repeat it, see if they get the same outcome. And maybe you see something in the data that causes you to rethink your original hypothesis. So as I said, this is a very overly simplistic viewpoint and the scientific method is in no way this simple in real life. Fortunately, for the purpose of most Davenport Day of Research projects, this will get you by. So how do I design a good experiment. In order to know how to design a good experiment, you need to understand some basic definitions, which you will need to apply in your experimental design. So an independent variable. This is the experimental factor that is being changed on purpose. Remember, the easiest way to state a hypothesis is if I do something, then something will change. So your independent variable is effectively what you are doing. It's the if part of your statement. The dependent variable is the measurable factor that changes in response to the independent variable. So the dependent variable is what you measure that is directly related, hopefully directly related, to your independent variable. So your dependent variable is the then part of the statement. If independent variable, then dependent variable changes such. Now, real life is not so simple as to just have two variables. So everything else is considered a control variable. A control variable is a factor that is held constant during the experiment. 
This makes it easier to reproduce experiments when you go through the peer review process and other people are repeating your experiments to get the same results that you did. Having controlled variables increases the confidence that your experiment is going to achieve a particular outcome because effectively you're limiting what's called a confounding variable, something that also impacts the dependent variable, but you are not controlling or you are not aware of it. So let's apply some of these definitions to the scientific process. So we're going to start in this situation with asking a question. Remember, you could also start with some observation with the background research. So my question for my theoretical situation, because I'm coming to you from my dining room, what I've now affectionately called the black box because of COVID. Thank you, John Oliver. My question is, will miracle drug decrease death rates from COVID-19? How timely? By just looking at the literature, I found a paper by Bazo this year that said COVID-19 infection fatality rates across the United States of America is around 1.3. So this gives me a baseline of what is occurring in the population, something that I can compare back to, to see if my drug is actually effective. So my hypothesis is if I have a million COVID patients and they're given the drug, then I will see significantly less deaths. And so if I'm taking a million people, I would see around 13,000 deaths out of the normal population if I never gave them the drug. I'm then going to test that hypothesis. So I'm going to give a million people COVID-19. Um, well, I'm not really going to give them COVID-19. They already have COVID-19. I'm going to give them the miracle drug. And then I'm going to take another million patients and I'm going to give them a placebo. So basically a sugar pill, not the actual drug. And just to see how our variables play into this experimental design, the independent variable is the presence or absence of miracle drug. So if miracle drug. The dependent variable is the percentage of deaths, then number of deaths. And the control value, excuse me, control variables are everything else. The patient's perceived reception of the medication. So why do we give a sugar pill? Because the human mind is so tricky that about a third of patients will think they're getting better even though you never gave them an actual medication. You just gave them a sugar pill. So we have to rule out the fact that the mind could be helping to cure patients simply because we're tricking their mind into thinking that we're helping them with this medication. How often patients receive the medication? If one group is receiving it daily and the other one is receiving it weekly, it's possible that the group that's receiving it weekly will think they're at a disadvantage. So we want to keep them on the same medication schedule. We need to have similar patient populations between our groups. We want to make sure our age and our standard deviation from that mean age is the same. We'll usually do exclusion or inclusion principles, such as we'll only take people between the ages of 18 and 65, exclude the young, exclude the old. That may complicate our study. So, you know, we want to make sure that the patients we see between our two groups are as similar as possible. Again, we can go on forever with control variables, but you want to make sure you include as many as possible because you don't know where that confounding variable might be. So let's say I actually do this. Let's say I observe 100 deaths in the miracle group. That's, sorry, miracle drug group. That's about 0.01%. And so I see about 10,000 deaths, about 1% in the placebo group. Cool, it looks promising, but is it statistically significant? So for this, because I have a large patient population size, I'm going to use a z-score in order to establish a significance. In this case, it's a p-value of less than 0 0.001. So because it's statistically different, I can conclude that, yeah, miracle drug will significantly decrease rates from COVID-19. I can get out of the black box. Finally, darn it, this is not real life. Okay, I need to work on that. So tips for a great project for the Davenport Day of Research. 
clearly follow the scientific method. That means clearly stating your question, your background research, your hypothesis. If I don't see those clearly stated, I will be asking, you better be ready. You also have to have a well thought out experimental design. And I highly recommend you do what I did on the prior slide. What's my dependent variable? What's my independent variable? What are as many control variables as I can think of? Now, yeah, your presentation's only a few minutes, so don't go nuts on control variable, but if I see that you've thought about it, I'm not gonna ask. You need to have considerations for what your results and their interpretation might be. So at the Davenport Day of Research, there are projects that have been done. They have actual results, they have actual statistics, they have actual conclusions. See me for research projects. But in a lot of the nursing students or other departments, for example, um, not my, my science, though some of my science are theoretical, uh, they do theoretical projects. In which case, you've done an experimental design, but what are you gonna do with the results? What results do you expect? Why do you expect them? Once you get the results, what statistics are you going to use? Yeah, I know nurses, you hate statistics, but they are your friend. I love them, embrace math. So with that said, you need to put either the realized or the anticipated results, how you analyzed them, and what you would expect to conclude from them. So in conclusion, by now, hopefully, you're able to describe the scientific method and its six steps. You can explain the strengths and the limitations of the scientific method so you know what kind of questions are appropriate. Hopefully now you can identify what an independent, dependent, and control variable is. And you can apply the scientific method to your research project. I'll be looking for that. So I just want to take a moment to thank you for your time. I hope you have found this to be informative. I have enjoyed putting it together. Uh, again, if you have any questions on how to put together a decent research project, uh, you can reach out to myself. Again, my name is Laura Harris. I have my email address right here, laura.harris at davenport.edu. Or, of course, your nursing and or other instructor or mentor would be a great person to ask. Everyone has a variation on how they approach the scientific method, and there's a lot of discussion in science that we may want to rejigger how we even think it. So always reach out to your instructors. We're here to help. Have a great presentation. <laughs>